Hi guys, this is the 10A part two notes and we're doing example number seven. It, this, the problem asks us to find the sine of theta and the tan of theta given the cosine of theta is seven over nine. No triangle, but we do have a hint. It says sometimes you'll need to draw your own picture. Whoa, that's totally new for us, but guess what? No problem, we can do this, all right? So the first thing that you want to do when you're doing these trig problems, of course, is to get our Sokotoa down. Now, if this helps you get it down just from how it sounds, Sokotoa, that's fine. And I like it better like this so that you can have those trig identities super, super handy. Okay, so if you want to get it like this first and then transfer it to like that, that's totally fine. And you can even go straight to doing your Sokotoa the better way and just skip this guy all together. That's the way to go in my opinion. Now let's draw a triangle. Well, we know for sure that we're dealing with a right triangle, don't we? And so you can draw a right triangle um, right away. You don't have to wait. And when you draw a right triangle, you're always going to want to draw your little box to say, hey, I know that I just drew a right triangle. Okay. And then we're going to label like we always do. And of course, that side across from that 90 degree angle is our hypotenuse. Okay. But can we label these sides yet? Well, we really can't yet because we haven't decided where theta is. And one of the ways that we might do that is to just look at cosine of theta. Cosine of theta here is 7 over 9. And remember that the cosine of theta is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Okay? And that means the adjacent side is going to be 7. And the hypotenuse is going to be 9. And what that means is since it's the adjacent side, that means it's touching theta. That means this is where theta needs to be if your adjacent side is there, okay? So remember, when you're writing those triangles, you want to do um, everything that we did in those other problems where you identify your adjacent side, your hypotenuse, and your opposite side. And we have two of our sides because of what we were given, but we still need this missing side. So again, real quick, we'll have to go and use our a squared plus b squared equals c squared, also known as leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. And then these guys making up that right angle are, are the legs. So we have seven squared plus, and remember, our x was a leg, so we want to put x squared equals, and then remember our hypotenuse is 9, so that's 9 squared, okay? Now the next thing we want to do is we want to multiply out those squares. 7 times 7 is going to give us 49. We still have plus x squared, and then 9 times 9, of course, is 81. We'll subtract our 49 from both sides. And don't forget, when you're learning these new principles, never a bad idea to just do any kind of arithmetic that's not that super, super comfortable arithmetic on your calculator. So we know now that x equals 32, okay, from our calculator. Now, this is not the number we want. This is what x squared equals. And so in order to get to x, of course, we have to take the square root of both sides, which will give us x equals the square root of 32. And of course, the best thing to do at this point is to find those prime factors, all right? And if we divide 32 by 2, of course, 2 is that smallest prime. 32 divided by 2 is going to give us 16. 
and we'll circle the primes as we factor. Now, 16 can also be divided by 2. Of course, that's going to give us 8, okay? So another prime. Oh, but we can divide 8 by 2. Another prime. 4 can also divide by 2. Two more primes. So it turns out 32 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So for each pair of 2s, 1, 2 will come out of our radical. We've got another set there. And when they come out, of course, they're going to multiply on the outside. So for each set of 2 on the inside, 1 will hop out. Then we'll get another 2 here. And these guys on the outside will multiply. Oh, this poor lonely 2, this last guy, nobody. He has to stay behind. This is going to simplify then to 4 root 2 because these 2s multiply. And, of course, our missing side then, instead of being that unknown, x is going to be 4 root 2. So we'll substitute our x with our 4 root 2. All right, now we want to find sine and tan. And sine, of course, sine of theta is the same thing. You can just look up at your Sokotoa, opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite side is that 4 root 2. Hypotenuse is the 9. Now let's look at see if we can reduce this at all. That 4 is the same as 2 times 2. And then, of course, we have that root 2. 3 times 3 for the 9, nothing cancels. So we can just leave it like this, right? Now we want to do our tan of theta, which is opposite over adjacent. Our tan of theta, opposite here being that 4 root 2 again. And our adjacent being 7. Now, 4 and 7 don't simplify, so there's our tan of theta. All right, thanks for watching, guys.